Hello to our viewers at home. My name is Param Eftakari. I'm a co-founder and senior fellow at the Institute for Critical Infrastructure Technology. Uh, here with me today is Stuart Draper, the Director of Insider Threats from Securonix. Stuart, great to have you here. Thank you. Appreciate you inviting me out. Absolutely. So what we're going to talk about today is next generation cybersecurity strategies, and in particular from your perspective, how behavior analytics can play a role in protecting our critical infrastructure sectors. Yeah. So to start with, I want to just ask you briefly, what do you view as the biggest threats uh, that critical infrastructure sectors and organizations are up against today? So, um, so a few things actually. Um, one of the first things I'll say is um, attack sophistication. Um, attacks are becoming more sophisticated. Um, they're, they're, they're leveraging uh, newer, better, quicker technology. Um, the, the attacks are unpredictable. They're very, very difficult to track. They're very difficult to, um, to better prevent as well. So uh, everybody's in a, in a state where they're having to a lot of times react um, due to that. So you've got nation states and things like that that are getting involved with uh, attacks against critical infrastructure. Um, so uh, you know the, the sophistication with which and the manner in which people are actually um, attacking organizations is probably the single biggest problem. Uh, and then hand in hand with that um, vulnerabilities as well. Yeah. Uh, the, 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 the volume of vulnerabilities that are out there, um, the manner in which they can be exploited, the zero days, all those things really make for um, a really disastrous recipe, almost a toxic combination uh, when it comes to how critical infrastructure can defend itself uh, against those sophisticated attacks and uh, whilst those vulnerabilities exist. And remember, not all the attacks that we uh, that are out there we, we necessarily know about or know about in time to be able to defend against them. So, um, so those are two of the major challenges that we currently uh, have facing us when it comes to uh, critical infrastructure and uh, you know, defending against those type of attacks. Absolutely. We see that a lot as an institute in our research as well. Um, as a fellow, you've obviously been involved in briefing uh, the Hill with us and providing yeah. your expertise yeah. uh, to um, the briefings and the publications that we put out. Um, ICIT has introduced a virtual tar pit concept, which really um, gets at the uh, shift in mentality towards a detect and respond. Yeah. And what the virtual tar pit is, is uh, getting organizations to understand they need an environment where the network administrator um, or the CIO, whoever it may be, um, can quickly identify unauthorized access yeah. and prevent a quick exfiltration using different types of technologies to basically give the organization the ability to stop the, uh, the unauthorized access before it becomes a full-fledged breach. Exactly. Um, behavior analytics, as you know, is a major component of this and one of the technologies that would have been very beneficial in scenarios uh, and uh, incidents like the OPM breach. So first of all, can you talk a bit to our viewers about what behavior analytics is and how that technology works? Yes, yeah, certainly. So. Um, so behavior analytics really gives you um, the edge when it comes to being able to detect um, uh, anomalies. Um, it gives you the edge in finding, um, finding those things that you may not necessarily be able to find with traditional tools and methodologies. So when you talk about things like SIM, you, you have boundaries and limits around um, the, the signature files about you know, what you can and can't find. With behavior analytics, you're creating a baseline of normal uh, and then you're looking for abnormal based on that baseline. You're looking for those things that don't quite look right. So you're not, you're not bound by certain restrictions that other tool sets and other solutions uh, really have uh, in front of them. So um, you know, the, the way that it works uh, from a technology standpoint, uh, we go about it by uh, creating a profile or a pattern of behavior and what looks like normal. So over the course of 10, 20, maybe 30 days, building up um, you know, how many times does Stuart Draper access the SharePoint mm -hmm. site? How many times, what times does he normally log in? Uh, what type of data is going outside of his, uh, you know, outside of the network from him? Uh, and building up that profile and that pattern uh, gives you a baseline to say, this is what it normally looks like. And then when I stray and deviate from that normal, then we can identify that as an outlier and say, something not quite right there. Is this a behavior change? Is this expected? Is it unexpected? So um, there are a lot of great functionality and features around behavior analytics that can help with um, uh, unintentional um, exposures, people you know, carelessly doing something, uh, as well as malicious actors as well. Yeah. But one of the biggest benefits is the reduction in noise. It's about how quickly um, you can read through the massive amounts of data and log files that are out there to find the things that truly matter the most and pose the most risk to your organization. Yeah, because we we, there's so much talk about the importance of threat information sharing, which yeah. is a positive, but on the other end of the spectrum is too much uh, <laughs> can, uh, can really overwhelm an organization and they can't prioritize and they miss things. Precisely. So, so um, you know, 
talk a bit specifically about how behavior analytics can give organizations an edge in protecting the critical infrastructures and why this is you know, just really exploding in terms of a new technology in the cybersecurity space. Yeah, so, um, so, so the edge comes, uh, like I mentioned, in, um, it, it comes in being able to identify um, uh, patterns and attacks and activities and breaches and reducing the time frames associated with how long a breach may occur, may, have, may take place or um, to reduce the profile in which an exfiltration may occur so you can help reduce that risk and cost associated with those type of activities. So uh, it factors all of that in and uh, it brings in, uh, you know, uh, m a more predictive way of knowing before things happen uh, what could happen. Um, so, you know, it, it really just provides a much more robust, holistic solution uh, to how you can go about protecting your data, um, detecting that, that one rogue disgruntled person that could be tempted to commit IT sabotage, things like that. Absolutely. So we're, we're nearing the end of the year. Um, organizations are looking uh, and building their 2016 strategies, they're allocating yeah. budgets. Yep. What recommend recommendations do you have for uh, organizations in different sectors um, f as p to um, improve and strengthen their security strategies for next year? Yeah, that's a great question. Um, so. Uh, so I would say, first thing, um, people need to invest in their staff. Um, mm -hmm. This isn't just about behavior analytics. Behavior analytics is a great solution, but um, one of the one of the biggest areas of concern when it comes to cybersecurity is um, human error. Right? Yeah. It's people that are going to click on that that phishing email that they get, yeah. um, that's going to bypass all of those perimeter and internal security controls that you have in place. So education and awareness um, with what type of cyber threats are out there. Um, education in um, do's and don'ts, um, you know, good, uh, healthy things to, to be doing and conducting uh, while you're actually on your organization's network and on your own as well. Um, you know, that that's critical and really can't be understated is how important it is to continue to invest in your staff and organization uh, in that training and awareness. So, uh, and a lot of the times it's free, there are some great solutions out there, but, you know, really just having that open dialogue and communication backwards and forwards uh, is just a huge help um, to how you can make sure people are more aware of what they should and shouldn't be doing. So uh, the second thing I would say would be investing in technology, yeah. uh, making sure that um, uh, all of these these great tools, these, um, the, these great concepts and ideas um, that are starting to move the dial um, in how people manage their security programs uh, and, and the type of work they can do and the, the volumes of work that they can do um, you know, that's something that's really important and, and, and is something that can help tremendously uh, when it comes to, uh, l like we've mentioned before, is getting through just the reams and reams of data that's out there um, and how you can use that data. So investing in technology is really, really important to make sure you're staying ahead of, like we talked about before, some of the sophisticated attacks um, that people are starting to become susceptible to now. Absolutely. Yeah, and, and the, the human element is so critical. Yeah. We see this over yeah. and over again when we're yeah. 80 to 90 percent or more of incidents are caused uh, <laughs> and start with a spear phishing yeah. attack. Well, you know, all the technology in the world will not help you. Yeah, exactly. So um, in, a, in about a month, you're going to be speaking at an ICIT briefing on the yeah. Hill called Hacking Hospitals. It's, uh, we were asked by the um, Senate Health Education Labor Pensions Committee to um, to, to do this, and they're sponsoring us, and we, we, we're very happy for that. I was wondering, specific to the healthcare sector, yeah. uh, how does behavior analytics um, give health organizations uh, an advantage in terms of uh, defending against the threats we're talking about? Yeah, that's a great question. Um, so healthcare, along with uh, energy um, and finance, really concerns me the most uh, when it comes to critical infrastructure. And um, I think healthcare and energy lag a little behind the financial sector in, in what they've invested in cybersecurity. Mm -hmm. So uh, the energy sector, in addition to finance, in addition to um, uh, healthcare really concern me the most when it comes to critical infrastructure. Um, I read a stat just the other day that one in 13 patients um, are going to have their medical records compromised <sighs> over the course of the next five years. So uh, when you think about the, the population uh, in the US, I mean, that, that's huge. Yeah. Um, uh, and the other thing around the healthcare sector is um, the, uh, the, the, the value associated with medical files. It's not like the, the financial sector where you can change a credit card, you can change an account number you're stuck with your medical history. <laughs> you're stuck with your social yeah. security number, you know, regardless of what happens to it. So um, it makes it really, really important to make sure you have um, things like behavioral analytics around it. And what behavioral analytics can do in the healthcare sector, um, you know, like we've mentioned, um, detection of um, data exfiltration is a big one. Um, uh, another one, misuse of high privilege accounts, you know, administrators going in um, and, um, you know, elevating rights and doing things that maybe be, be bad security practices or, or things that are unethical, whatever the case may be. Uh, but a, a huge issue in the uh, healthcare sector is data snooping. Mm -hmm. um, it's people going in and looking at medical records 
whether it's for their own interest or whatever the case may be, but uh, it's something that's plagued the healthcare sector and behavior analytics gives the ability to see what kind of activity and patterns um, people are actually uh, conducting, what they're doing, uh, how, they're, how they're kind of navigating the network and uh, you know, what devices they're using and stuff like that. So it gives you a much better behavioral profile um, within the industry to, to be able to take very keen, important jobs like doctors and nurses and things like that that have a role and responsibility of having um, important access to that yeah. confidential data uh, in medical records, um, but to make sure they're not using that, those, um, uh, those rights and those permissions as well. Yeah, uh, and y your point about um, the unique value inherent in healthcare data is, is very well taken. Yeah. yeah. Um, so, in, in closing out the discussion, I want to just ask you: um, You've been with the institute now as a fellow for many, many months. Um, as yeah. some of your colleagues, you've yeah. contributed to briefs on the Hill and yeah. with federal agencies and, and in the publications. How do you find that being involved in a think tank and, and through the um, the yeah. Um, education that we we provide um, to uh, offices. How has it helped you get the message out about behavior analytics and build better relationships with decision makers uh, across the country? Yeah, it's been it's been huge. Um, uh, the it's really really difficult to be able to bridge the gap between the public and and, and government sector sometimes. Um, so being able to uh, extend an arm through ICIT. Uh, in, in helping with awareness and education on some of the issues uh, and some of the opportunities as well when we talk about behavior analysis um, have been just huge for us. Um, we've had some wonderful chances that ICIT has provided, meaning senior staffers and things like that, that we couldn't have gotten without yeah. those type of relationships. So uh, another great thing that I love about um, our relationship so far is the ability to collaborate and work with other fellows. Yeah. There are some super smart people yeah. uh, in ICIT and to be able to bounce ideas and, and you know, break down the barriers of you know who's in what company and talk about the real issues when yeah. it comes to cybersecurity is just um, it, it's something you can't buy. Uh, and collaboration is so important in this day and age. We can talk about information sharing, about all marching to this be the same drum yes. towards the same goal. So th those are, are two of probably the biggest factors that have really been a, a, a huge bonus in our relationship with ICIT. Uh, well, we appreciate that, and, and the insights have been has been phenomenal from you guys with behavior analytics. It's going to only continue to grow. So, I think so we look forward to the future. Thank you so well, much. Stuart, thank you so much. Appreciate um, your time very much. If anyone's interested to getting in touch with Stuart, you can reach out to the institute, and we'll, we'll get you guys engaged. Um, and uh, we thank you for joining us. Thank you.